Good mid-morning, everyone. It's a pretty good morning for the markets. Everybody seems to be happy about the shortened week and certainly happy about some of the metrics that came out this morning in terms of labor numbers and unemployment, initial claims, job gains, uh, all kinds of stuff to go over with you guys. So not a lot going on other than that today. We have, again, the shortened week. Uh, markets are closed tomorrow, so I want to wish you all a very lovely, healthy, safe, and fun 4th of July. Happy Independence Day to everyone. So, yeah, where are we? Where are our Dow is up almost 1%, um, and S&P similarly. NASDAQ, of course, leading the way a little over 1%. Um, oil is up today, so everything's getting a bit of a bid today. Um, pretty good risk on day. Why are we looking at a risk on day? Well, because the market, first of all, has momentum higher. So we're a little bit stagnant, but the general trend has surely positively been higher. Market then pauses, consolidates, looking for some direction, looking for metrics to trade off of, looking for order flow to trade off of, looking for all kinds of things. And oftentimes when it gets something, it, that's all it needs. It could be a little something. It could be nothing. It could be just a sentiment move that investors are still in the market, still buying. And next thing you know, we're off again. We haven't cleared hurdles in terms of the Dow and the S&P. We have, again, made another new all-time high intraday today on the NASDAQ deposit. Probably close out with a new all-time high, uh, but certainly on an intraday basis, um, it got up there very quickly and very easily. So let's take a look at the numbers this morning. What motivated the futures to pop, what motivated investors to jump in. Pretty much it was numbers from Labor Department and specifically jobs, jobs in the month of June. There were 4.8 million new jobs created in June. Now, that doesn't mean these were businesses that were hiring for the first time. Uh, those are folks that are going back to work. So not new jobs. There may be some new jobs in there. A lot of businesses that didn't do well may have shut down, may have sidelined, maybe started new businesses. Um, a lot of, I know a handful of people who created parallel companies in order to write off their old company, which makes a lot of sense, and start a new company and take advantage of that, take the write-off of the old company uh, capital-wise. So a, a lot of interesting things can be done and, and are being done um, by some pretty smart folks. So. If, you, if you're in that situation or you know people in that situation, that's something you might want to talk to them about or have them take a look at. So it makes a lot of sense. And uh, some of the, the plays in terms of business owners that I'm, I'm hearing are, are not that complicated, but brilliant. So a lot of stuff to look at there. So the 4.8 million jobs uh, created in June, um, additional jobs to the workforce, um, Great. Love that. And that is up from what was estimated to be an addition of 3.23 million. So the market obviously really liked that. Unemployment for June came in at 11.1%. The estimate was for unemployment rate to be 12.5%. So not only did it beat the estimate, but the 1.1% is a lot lower than May's 13.3% unemployment rate. So really good numbers there. However, and I apologize, I got a little bit of um, the sniffles from some flowers I was picking earlier. Um, the, the, the problem I have with the numbers is the thing called the classification errors. Um, BLS, Bureau of Labor Statistics, is talking about, openly talking about classification errors. And they're saying that some of the folks that are signing their, and off on the surveys are perhaps miscategorizing themselves. So they are adjusting that internally, but they're not posting that adjustment to the headline numbers. If they were to post their adjustments to classification errors, because of classification errors, then the unemployment rate for the month of June would be 
percentage points higher. So we wouldn't be at 11.1, we'd actually be at 12.2, okay? So this is a little confusing to say the least. What I don't understand, and there's no explanation to this, if you have classification errors and you are aware that there are classification errors, first of all, how can they be errors? You, you incorporate them correctly into the data. So why are we even talking about classification errors? Is that a margin of error? No, they talk about them as actual classification errors. But how does BLS know when somebody fills out a survey that they've made a mistake in how they classified themselves as working, not working, looking for work? How do they know? So I don't know. There's no explanation for it on their website. There hasn't been. I've looked for it for a couple of maybe a month and a half now. Every time the numbers come out, I want to see if there's any explanation. I drill down. There's nothing there. There's no explanation of that. Does that mean the numbers can be fudged? I hate to think so, but yes, it does. So um, do I believe they're being fudged? No, but I believe anything is possible. We're going with the headline numbers. 4.8 million new jobs in June, um, unemployment claims, initial unemployment claims for the week, 1.427 million. So we have 1.427 million new unemployment claims last week. On top of the fact that 4.8 million jobs were brought back online in June. There, there's something that doesn't really make sense. Continuing claims, you think they'd be falling rapidly if there were 4.8 million jobs brought back online last month. But no, continuing claims for the week, when that's a two-week lag, 19.290 million, 19,290,000 19, continuing claims. That is up a little bit from the previous week. So we've got strong large continuing claims, people staying on unemployment. At the same time, we're seeing 4.8 million people go back to work. Something doesn't make sense. I don't know what it is. You listen to the analysts, you read everything you can get your hands on, nobody understands it. But these are the questions that are coming up regularly now. What how do you read these numbers? If the, if, we, if the validity is in question as to the numbers, because we're not sure what they really mean, because you got one going one way, one going another way, and they just don't make sense when you look at them together. And then, of course, we have the classification errors um, as another issue. So being that as it may, we go with the headline numbers because that's what markets trade off of. And they certainly like the numbers because better than expected. And so be it. It's all good if that's the way you view it. If that's the way um, you view it and that motivates you to buy, um, then that's what we're seeing. We're seeing that positive sentiment um, represented in buy orders and markets are higher. We are, we are off of the highs that we opened up. We opened up um, on the Dow. Uh, we opened up at the Dow about 202 points higher. We've gotten back up there. Um, we're up 230 now, but we came right back down. It was got a little scary. Uh, the high of the day is, is 26,204. And uh, I, based on the way the markets are trading, wouldn't surprise me if we closed near the highs today. But um, coming down as they did, it was almost as if nobody was there to bid and support the markets. Um, so could we end up lower on the day? Not lower. I don't think we're going to end up negative on the day. That would be a shocker for sure because we've seen that sometimes on Wednesdays where there is some profit taking and Wednesdays and other times we've seen excuse me, on, on the end of the week and this is the end of the week for this trading week and other times we have seen pretty consistent buying on Friday. So we've seen a mixed bag. Um, again, when the rally started off of the lows, every Friday was a risk on day. We've seen a couple now where maybe investors are scratching their heads and maybe don't want to hold over the week end. But uh, right now, they're certainly loving the numbers that they saw. And it wouldn't surprise me if we closed on the highs today. So the only other two points I want to make about the metrics today, the numbers that came out today, is that uh, earnings, uh, worker earnings, were down 1.2% in 
June. They were down 1.67% in May. They're down 5% year to date. So that's not the, obviously the right direction for workers. Um, hourly Hours worked were also down slightly last week. Um, excuse me, for the month of June, um, average hours worked. This is from BLS, uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, average hours worked were uh, 20, excuse me, let me just find these numbers. Got a whole page, pages full of numbers. Um, let's go back to the other pages. They, <clears throat> Average work week for June, um, 34.5 hours. That's down from just slightly from uh, 34.7 for May. So people are going back to work. Presumably, they're working slightly fewer hours, um, and still people remain lined up for unemployment benefits. Um, it's a mixed bag. Markets don't care. It's like the, uh, you know, the, the badger markets don't care. It's like the honey badger market don't care. You're just going to go what it's going to do and eat what it's going to eat and just go higher and get fatter and keep on going. And uh, listen, here's the thing. When you don't understand or things don't make sense or logic doesn't really apply, it doesn't matter. Unless you can analyze yourself to death. What matters is what the market's doing because the trend is your friend. You go with the trend. As difficult it is, as it is, and I'm sure all of you have had conversations out there um, that are confusing to yourselves. Also, listening to things coming and going and different ideas and different an analysis from different perspectives, and it's confusing. At the end of the day, who cares, right? We don't know. Nobody knows. If anyone says they know, you know that they don't. So go with the flow. Markets want to go up. They're moving up. That's the best we can hope for, and that's what we've got. So I'm looking for any questions that you guys have to talk about any stocks you want. I'm going to make this a short afternoon because some of you want to start the long weekend early, and there's not a lot going on. Um, we didn't have a lot of participants the other day. So, again, I think a lot of folks are taking the week off, um, being leisurely, and that's all good. And so I'm going to just go to some quick charts. I don't see any questions. I'll come back to the, um, any questions if there are. In the meantime, let's just have a quick look at the majors, have a quick look at some of the driving stocks, including Tesla. And we'll talk a little bit of irrational exuberance. Um, again, no matter what you think, no matter what you call it, it is what it is. Is it rational? Is it irrational? Maybe. Doesn't make sense. But it does if you own the stocks. <laughs> it does if you own the stocks. Okay, let's take a look here. We're going to go to good old bar charts. And first up is Wells Fargo. Why Wells Fargo? Because we've talked about Wells Fargo. Um, I've recommended it. Um, I, I like the stock down here. And I just want to keep an eye on it and have you guys keep an eye on it. They haven't cut the dividends. They haven't spoken about that yet. Um, their capital plan has to be put uh, to the Fed uh, within the next two weeks. So we should hear something. Again, the expectations are for a dividend cut at Wells Fargo. Um, the analysts' range of estimates is between 35 and 50 percent, um, which would take the dividend down to about um, 4 percent. Um, it's close to 8 percent now. Um, so if it's one of the reasons that I like the stock, I even with the dividend cut, um, I think the bank can sustain it. It's currently 807 uh, based on the price of about 2525. So uh, again, that's a heck of a yield. If they cut that even 25 percent, 35 percent, you've got a hell of a yield on a too big to fail bank whose stock over time is going to bounce. To me, Wells Fargo is reminiscent of Microsoft years ago when Steve Ballmer was running it, when they got him out, well, he retired, um, but they got fresh management in there, fresh eyes, um, completely different perspective on how to grow the business, and the rest of the story, as they say, is magical. So if you own Microsoft and you held on through the Steve Ballmer bummer years, um, you've been rewarded handsomely. Thank you, Mr. Sate Nadella. Uh, so here's Wells Fargo, again, bouncing along its channel lows. 
I think it's a buy down here. It's a long term hold. It's not a trading stock like, okay, this thing is going to bounce 25% in the next five minutes. No, this is a long term hold. I believe this stock in three to five years, I'm really targeting probably closer to the three side of that is double for me. Um, so that's why I like Wells Fargo. Let's take a look at the majors. And we'll start with the Dow, see if there's anything we need to be cognizant of. And so far, so good. Dow's uh, up almost 1%. We, it would be nice if the Dow closes above 26,000 because that's what it's trying to do. We got above there today at 26,200 and change. So um, here's the 26,000 level up here. And let's draw a little line there for you. It'd be nice because that would mean that the Dow is trying to consolidate um, in, a, in a great place. So let's talk about, so we're going to go 26,000. We'll just go around here. We'll just kind of make a, just a little bit. We'll speculate a little bit. Then this is, I just drew a line to kind of dissect some of those bars at 26,216. We got to 26,204 um, earlier today. And um, if we close up there, we end up in there, we've got this sideways consolidation. And if we start to break out of that, um, that bodes well um, for the Dow. So, so far, so good for the Dow. We've got this support down here. We're not near there. We're coming up once again to the 200 day moving average as we trade today, as we trade right now, I, well, actually we're just slightly below um, at 25,970, uh, we're just slightly below, just a tiny bit below the 20 day. Uh, at 26,000, tiny bit over that, we are above at or just above the 20 day. What's more important than that is the 200 day, the red, our red, line here is the 200 day um we get and that 200 day today on today's bar is about let's we'll, we'll call that maybe 26,281 we'll go with that so we get there we're above the 200 day that's going to bode well for a lot of technical traders. They're going to look at this as a practice, a little bit of a breakout. All good from there. Now, let's have a quick look at the S&P. And similar story. However, the S&P has shown more strength than the Dow in terms of it is above, handsomely above, its 200-day and above its 20 days. So S&P showing greater strength and greater propensity to go higher. So that's compelling for uh, investors that you have the institutional view of quote unquote the market vis-a-vis uh, -vis the S&P 500. And that is looking stronger than the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So pretty good there. Um, really nothing to sneeze at there. Just, just all, all good and uh, heading higher, so nothing to worry about. Now, the NASDAQ, oh my goodness, just, just out of the park once again. Another internal intraday all-time high and probably may close um, at an end of day all-time high. But again, here, here's some of our, our chart lines from before. And you can see where we are on, on this bar here. We have this almost, you know, not quite a gap, a little bit of a gap higher today. And just, just are you out of the, out of the park, ladies and gentlemen, out of the park. Going to, you know, eventually pierce the upside of this trending channel line, uptrending channel line. So that is some kind of resistance. And it doesn't seem to be any resistance for the NASDAQ. Um, barreling, it was barreling into those companies. Why? Because they are the place to be, have been the place to be. And I don't think it's too late to get into stocks like Apple or Microsoft. Um, you got to obviously be careful because anytime you're getting in stocks at highs, um, it, it's that dicey proposition. Just got to be tight on those. Um, but 
if the market continues looking the way it's looking, and I, I'm not sure it will, does or will or can, but that's the logic in me. That's the guy in me who's trying to figure out how this might go, and um, I'm scratching my head. The observer in me says, who cares? Go long. Buy the dips. Keep buying them. And that's what's worked. So let's quick look at Tesla because Tesla – and I have had a history of trading Tesla, Tesla from both sides. Um, I've learned the hard way not to ever fade Tesla because you just can't do it. It's too many people try and pick uh, a spot where they think that's it. Stock is coming down. The valuation doesn't comport with any of the metrics, and they everyone gets their head handed to them who tries to play that game. So I don't, and doesn't mean I own the stock because I it's still to me a little scary. But you got to love it if you own it, guys. Congratulations if you got bought into Tesla for the narrative for the stock just because you like the technicals or like the, you like the fact that it keeps going up. Yes, if you wrote it down here, that was a scary run, but this is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, got to hand it to Tesla. Just, just absolutely staggering wealth creation um, on Tesla. I got to get all kudos to Mr. Elon Musk. Really just absolutely brilliant. So look, look at this. Nowhere to go but up, folks. Nowhere to go but up. Um, does this gap bother me? Sure it does. If you own the stock, um, do you take profits? Do you worry about where you're at? Mm, how about how about that? Well, you know, we could take so even if we go to there, which I'm just exaggerating, um, you're just in no man's land. So good luck with it. Um, for all of those who own Tesla, my hat's off to you. All right, I'm going to say, um, since I'm going to have a quick look back, see if there's any questions you guys have. And then we're going to make it an early, an early close. Let you get on with your afternoon. I'm going to get on with mine. Got some errands to run. Got to want to see if I can uh, knock out a couple of trades before the day winds down. And then uh, go out and uh, get some charcoal, get some hot dogs, and start the long weekend a little early. So quick look, see if there's any questions. I don't see anything. Hey, everybody, um, 12.08. This is a real short visit. Thanks for being with me. Um, have a very happy 4th of July, everyone. A safe Independence Day. And um, I'll catch you next week. Enjoy. Be safe out there. Cheers.